Hello, my name is Juan, and thank you for visiting my channel. I'll be reading a book today, just the first chapter of Dracula's Bram Stroker. Uh, this is chapter one. Left Munich at 8.35 p.m. on the 1st of May, arriving at the Vienna early next morning. Should have arrived at 6.46, but the train was an hour late. Budapest seemed wonderful place from the glimpse which I got from it from the train and the little I could walk through the streets. I feared to go very far from the station as we arrived late and would start as near the correct time as possible. The impression that I had was that we were leaving the west and entering the east. The most western of splendid bridges over the Danube which is here of noble width, width and depth, took us among traditions of Turkish rule. We left in pretty good time and came after nightfall to Klansburg. Here I stopped for the night at the Hotel Royal. I had a dinner, or rather supper, a chicken done up some way with red peppers, which was very good, but thirsty. I asked the waiter, and he said it was called Prapika Hendel, and that as it was a national dish, I should be able to get anywhere al along the Carpathians, and I found my smattering of German very useful here. Indeed, I don't know how I should be able to get on without it. Having some time at my disposal, when in London I had to visit the British Museum and made search among the books, the maps, and the library regarding Transylvania. It had struck me that some foreknowledge of the country could hardly fail to have some importance in dealing with a noble, nobleman of that country. I find that the district he named is in the extreme east of the country, just on the borders of three states, Transylvania, Moldavia, and Bokivnia, in the midst of the Carpathian Mountains. One of the wildest and least known portions of Europe. I was not able to lie on any map or work, given the exact locality of the castle Dracula, as there are no maps of this country as yet to compare with our own ordnance survey maps. But I found that the Bistrix post town by the Count Dracula is a fairly known place. I shall enter here some of my notes, as they may refresh my memory when I talk over my travels with Mina. In the population of Transylvania, there are four distinct nationalities. Saxon in the south, and mixed with them, the Wallachs, who are the descendants of Dacians, the Magmars in the west, Siculos <laughs> in the east and north. I'm going among the latter who claim to be descendants from Athia in the Huns. This may be so for when the Magyars conquered the country in the 11th century, they found the Huns settled in, in it. I read that every known superstition in the world is gathered into the horse shoe of the Carpathians as if it were the century of some sort of imaginative whirlpool. If so may stay, or so may my stay be very interesting. I must ask the Count all about them. I did not sleep well. Through my bed was was a comfortable enough for all I had was sorts of queer dreams. 
there was a dog howling all night under my window which may have something to do with it it may have been the paprika for I had the to drink up all the water in my cafe waking with continuous knocking at my door so I guess I must be sleeping soundly then I had four Breakfast, more paprika, and a sort of porridge, maize flour, which they said it was mama ligra. Eggplant stuff with forced meat, a very excellent dish, which they call empaleta. I had to hurry breakfast for the train started a little before eight, or rather it had, had rather odd to have done so. After rushing to the station at 7.30, I had to sit at the carriage for more than an hour before we began to move. It seemed to me that the further east you go, the more unpunctual are the trains. What are they to be in China? All day long seemed to be dwaddled through a country which was full of beasts of every kind. Sometimes we saw little towns or castles on top of the steep hills and such as we see in all missiles. Sometimes we ran by rivers and streams which seemed from wide stony margin or each side of them to subjects to the great floods. It takes a lot of water and running strong to sweep the outside of the edge of clear river clear. At every station there were groups of people, sometimes crowds and all sorts of attire. Some of them were just like the peasants at home. Those I saw coming through France and Germany with short jackets and round hats. Homemade trousers. Others were very picturesque. The women looked pretty, except when you got near them, they were very clumsy about the waist. They had full white sleeves of some kind or some kind of another. Most of them had big belts with a lot of stripes of something fluttering from them, like dresses in a ballet. Of course, there were petticoats under them. The strangest figure, figures we saw were the Slovaks, who were more barbarian than the rest, with their big cowboy hats, gray, baggy, dirty white trousers, white linen shirts, enormous heavy leather belts near a foot wide, all studded over with brass nails. They wore high boots with their trousers tucked in them. Had long black, heavy black hair, heavy black mustache. They were very picturesque and do not look prepossessing on the stage they would be set down as once as an old oriental band of brigands. They however I am told very harmless and rather wanting the natural self assertion. It was the dark side of twilight when we got to Bistrix, which is a very interesting old place, being practically on the frontier for the Borgo Pass leads from it into Bukovina. It was it has had a very stormy existence and certainly shows marks of it. 50 years ago, a series of great fires took place, which made terrible havoc on five separate occasions. At the very beginning of the 17th century, it underwent a siege of three weeks and lost 13,000 people, the casualties of war. Proper being assisted by famine disease. 
Count Dracula had directed me to go to the Golden Crone Hotel, which I found to my great delight to be thoroughly old fashioned, for of course I wanted to see all I could of the ways of the country. I was evidently expected for when I got near the door, I faced a cheery looking elderly woman in a usual peasant dress, white undergarment with a long double apron, front and back of the colored stuffing, almost too tight for modesty. When I came close, she bowed and said, her English, yes, I said, Jonathan Harker, she smiled, gave some message to the elderly man in the white shirt sleeves who had followed her to the door. He went, but immediately returned with the letter. My friend, welcome to the Carpathians. I'm anxiously expecting you. Sleep well tonight. At three tomorrow, the vigilance will start for Bikivnia. A place on it is kept for you. At the Borgo Pass, my carriage will await you and bring you, you to me. I trust your journey from London has been a happy one and that you will enjoy your stay in my beautiful land, your friend, Dracula. The 4th of May. I found that my landlord has gotten a letter from the Count directing him to secure the best place on the coach for me. But I'm making inquiries as details. He seemed somewhat sent and pretended that he could not understand my German. This could not be true because up to then he had understand it perfectly. Now at least he answered my questions exactly as if he did. He and his friends and his wife, the old lady have received me and looked at each other in, in a fine sort of way. He mumbled that the money had been sent in a letter and that was all he knew. When I asked him if he knew Count Dracula, could they tell me something of his castle? Both he and his wife crossed themselves, saying they knew nothing at all. Simply to refuse to speak further. It was so near the time, it started that I had no time to ask anyone else, for it was very mysterious and not by any means comforting. Just before I was leaving, a lady came up to my room and said, in a very hysterical way, must you go, oh young her? Must you go? She was in an excited state, and she must seem to have lost her grip of what German she knew. Mix it all, mix it all up with some other language I did not know at, at all. I wish I was able to follow her by asking many questions. When I told her that I must go at once, that was, that was engaged in important business. She said again, do you know what day it is? I answered that it was the 4th of May. She shook her head and said again, oh yes, I know what, I know that. Do you know what day it is? I'm saying that I did not understand she went on. It is the eve of St. George's Day. Do you not know tonight when the clock strikes midnight, all evil things in the world will have a full sway. Do you know where you're going and what you're going to do? She was in such evident distress that I tried to comfort her, but without effect. Finally, she went down on her knees and implored me not to go. At least to wait a day or two before starting. It was all very ridiculous, and I did not feel comfortable. However, there was business to be done, and I could not allow nothing to interfere with it. I therefore tried to raise her up and said gravely as I could, that 
I thanked her, but my duty was imperative, and I must go. She rose, dried her eyes, taking the crucifix from her neck, offered it to me. I did not know what to do for an English churchman. I've been taught to regard such thing as some measure of idol or as yet seemed to be ungracious to refuse an old lady meaning so well in such a state of mind. She saw, I suppose, the doubt in my face, for she put the rosary around my neck and said, for your mother's sake, and went out of the room. I'm wrapping up this part of the diary while I'm waiting for the coach, which is of course late. The crucifix is still around my neck. Whether it's an old lady's fear or many ghostly traditions of this place. The crucifix itself, I do not know. But I'm not feeling nearly as easy in mind as usual. If this book should be, should ever reach Mina before I do, I'll let it bring my goodbye. Here comes my coach. And we'll stop here. So far, pretty good. Um, I've never actually read the book. I've watched the movies. I've heard good things about it, so I'm interested to keep going. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I'm just more so something I want to do for myself, kind of read. Um, there's a few books that are, they do not have copyright, so I'm able to read some of those, specifically older books. Um, if you have any comments, please comment on the video below. And if you have any tips or anything like that for me to improve, you know, on this, on reading books or any of my voice work or anything like that, I'd be happy to hear it. Thank you and have a good day.